1966, Bob Dylan began his first electric world tour. It was a landmark moment, both for Dylan and for the history of rock music, and it bitterly divided his audience. It was a cataclysmic move in just every regard, you know, it was hugely important aesthetically, it was, you know, culturally upsetting, but it was, you know, it was as, as big a thing that's ever happened in, in the history of rock and roll, Dylan going electric. Dylan was God. Jim McGuinn was not. Phil Oakes was not. Pete Seeger was not. Only Dylan. He was God. So God changed his mind. Yes, that made a big difference to all those who worshipped his, uh, his divine presence. As the tour progressed and the booing and the foot stomping got louder, we laughed at it from the stage. We kind of laughed at them in their face. And when the booing got loud, I played a little louder. Backing Dylan on stage were an obscure group of Canadian musicians collectively known as the Hawks. In the months following the tour, they would join Dylan during a lengthy convalescence in New York's Catskill Mountains. When both parties re-emerged, Dylan had undergone an artistic transformation that sent ripples across American music, and the Hawks had become simply the band, one of the most important recording groups of their generation.